stock here. We're good. Let me just go here. RMP to P stream. Here we go. Ready to start streaming. And we're live. Do not use. Okay, we're live. Everyone's live. Family friendly content. And we're it's starting. Here we go. Fix your hair. We're live. Okay, Davis, you want to check your phone? Make sure we're live. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I gotta read the super chats. That's. I mean. You're gonna have to read the super chats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I can't do that. Not with holding the camera, dude. Hold on here. Guys, Did we are live. <laughs> no, super chats. <laughs> Oh, there it is. It, it's a notification. Nice. So we are live. We're live. Yes, nice. we're live. Okay. Yeah, sound good? There. Oh, we're, 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 we're pristine. The quality is great. Amazing? It's fantastic. Perfect. Glasses on? No. Yeah, All right, here we go. What we're doing today. All right, guys. So we are here with Jim <laughs> from Grand Slam, and we're going to spool these custom built poker electric reels and other reels we have here. We've got tons of reels to spool, but these were custom designed. For a buddy of mine, we had, we added, everything's been customized. We have custom plates with this logo on it. We got custom frames, anodized, custom uh, anodized spool. It's pretty cool, right? Right, Jim, have you ever seen one of these before, like this? I've seen this before, but not this configuration of colors. It's pretty cool, yeah, right? They do a lot of different neat anodizing down there. Oh, yeah. So we're going to put some tape on the bottom of the reel right now to make sure that the line does not slip. It's very, very important. You know, just standard electrical tape. That's what we got. Let me, let me crank it. No, that's all right. That's good. Right, I'm going to turn this down. Okay. And the reason we put the tape at the bottom is to make sure the line does not slip. Very important because otherwise you can put a lot of pressure on a reel. It's going to slip and you're going to be miserable. We also have taken off the level line off the reel because if you don't the first say half of the spools it starts building up kind of in a U shape on the spool so you take that off we'll fill it about half to two-thirds and then we'll put the level line back on right. and finish it up and what kind of knot are we using to connect to the thing reverse it's a, uni? yeah it's a reverse uni we go around twice you wrap the spool twice with the line just in case gives you a little extra strength yeah I'm all about doubling it up even when I tie to my swivels, I always double it up. Okay, so come over here so you can see the right here on this side. There we go. Oh, yeah. Is that better? You can tell that's a good knot. Is that black tip H approved? Well, we'll see here. I'm going to slide it over the tape. It's all about how it cinches down. Not gonna slide. Mm -mm. She's pristine. So we go to the knot. We're good. We're good. Uh, I don't think we'll ever go to the knot on this reel, but and if you do, you got a little more strength on there now. Yeah. But if we go to the knot on this thing, we're in some serious trouble. This is gonna be interesting. So who's gonna hold the line up? I'm gonna. I was gonna hold the. Uh, you wanna do that, Mike? Hold the spool. Yeah, Mike's gonna uh, hold right the spool. Right hand or left? I'm ambidextrous. Hey. <laughs> there we go. Mike's going to put pressure on the spool, so we uh, got plenty of, plenty of uh, tension on the braid so that when we start filling it, uh, it's going to go on super tight. And I'm going to do the level that's, lining. That, that's the key. You want it on yep. as tight as possible. Hang on one second. You do not want loose line on your reel. It will dig inside itself. You're going to lose big fish. This reel, we're, we're spooling this thing for deep cropping. So for fishing 1,000 feet of water, 1,500 feet of water, for big groupers, uh, deep water snapper, and also use this for high-speed trolling for Wahoo when you don't feel like hand cranking, because sometimes you get tired. <laughs> All right, so you want to fire it up, Josh? Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready, Davis? Three, two, and spooling. I'm going to start slow. Oh, yeah, we need drag. That's important. There we go. We got drag now. Let me know when you want me to speed up. You can go. All the way, send it? Yep. Boom, there we go. We are sending it. Just, people are saying we should just go fishing now. Like, well, you gotta screw the reels up properly before you go fishing. I, I always tell people, Jim, 
if you're not prepared and spooling your reels and you're, you're not connected, if, if you don't do this properly, you might as well just not go offshore. You're wasting your time. You lose a lot of fish. You're gonna lose a lot of fish. You're gonna waste. You're gonna lose a lot of money. You're gonna waste a lot of time. Attention to detail with all your knots, your connections, your splices. It's, 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 it's the, the most, most important thing. thing. It, I mean, because you know, this isn't. A lot of people, especially that come from a freshwater background, you know, you can get away with a with a with a you know a crappy knot. I mean, but like here, you hook. You might be fishing for sailfish. You hook a hundred pound yellowfin. You better be ready. Yeah, it happened the other day to one of our customers. Yeah. Same exact thing. They were sail live baiting with real small little reels and 20 pound mono, and they got into the black fins. I don't know, they caught a dozen or so, right? Yeah. And then uh, they were just getting ready to head in. The last bait out got bit, and it was a 122 pound yellow fin. So. That's it. And they caught it. How long do you fight it for? An hour and a half, I think. Caught it in with a dart. 20 yeah. pound tackle? Yeah. Oh. You know, when I, when I, when I take fish, I try to. I try to always use 30 just for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know how you know how it is with the sharks around here. If he goes in shallow, he's yeah, he's in big, big trouble. <laughs> Even a fish that big though, like it's crazy. They'll gang up on him and just destroy him. We are using a uh, line right now. We're using J Braid, 120 pounds. This is a hooker electric reel, custom built. Show them, show them the counter right here, David. Yeah. Quality looks incredible, actually. It looks really, really good, dude. You got the feels incredible. Great work, David. The Justin the Shutter Street guys, that screen does not skip like that. That's the camera doing that. There we go. Shutter Street looks pristine now. Yeah, that is beautiful. Great work, David. All right, so we're gonna spool this thing. How many yards you got on that? Oh, yeah, we got thinner here. So, guys, this isn't very important, okay? This isn't feet. A lot of people think that's feet on these electric reels. It's not. That's rotations, okay? This is our yard counter right here. So we got 255 yards, and we have 1,400 rotations. Your rotations is based on the spool diameter of the reel, right? So the, obviously the more line you have on the reel, the more line is per, per rotation. The lower you get down the reel, the less line it is. So it's a huge mistake. I mean, a lot of people, they always confuse that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I think it's all electric reels, right? I mean, do any of them have options where they convert it to? You can't. It's spool diameter and, 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 and line right. diameter, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone does that. I'm sure we. I'm sure we could build an algorithm that could do it though. Just down the road. Someone could. Yeah. Just, <laughs> if you put, if you input the, your your line, your, uh, your the diameter of your line in, in millimeters, and then you and the, you just got to calculate based on spool diameter. A lot of tension on the line, guys. That's important. I think. I think. I think you could. You could drop it. Towards it, get that much line to the There's no current over there. Yeah. Right? And that's not like over here where it's like ripping. I was sword fishing the other day, it was 6.5 miles an hour current. How do you 12 pounds of lead? Is that what you're doing with this one? No, this one. Well, we're going to. Or it's mainly deep dropping? Yeah, this is mainly deep, deep dropping. See, like, I, I'm, I'm a little torn right now. Like, I want to spool the other one with 80 because I want to go deep. I want to go really deep. But. I also want, these are our high speed trolling reels too. I think 80 is fine for high speed trolling. I mean, you think they're gonna pop that? I, don't think so. I mean, because the, the, what's the Monel wire? What's that 70, 70, what is it? 70, 70 or 85. Yeah. yeah. Or 100. And Avery has that, Avery ever heard of that breaking? I mean, obviously someone can break yeah, it. Yeah, it breaks, but. To, but. <clears throat> why, the, why are we using multicolored braid? Eh. Because it looks nice. Looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> We're not really. There's no need. No matter what, you always have to look good when you're. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it just looks really cool. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Can we take a quick break? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll stop for one second.
You want, you want me to slow down? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. It's electric rail. This got turned off. <laughs> Hold on, we got a phone ringing here, guys. And my phone's ringing too. CBS Marine Service. Everybody's phone was ringing. It's like, it's like, what the heck, man? <laughs> All right, ready? All right, hold on, guys, stand by. Let's see what it looks like. Stop. Ooh, colorful. What do you, do you think we can put the line counter, the line counter back on now? Um, yeah, we could. We could probably think, put it back on now. You want to put it back on now, or do you want you want, you want to put it up a little higher? Yeah, we can go now. Go now. Since okay. we're taking a break anyway. Okay. There you go. Greasy, the greasy that, screw. That, that's that good grease right there, bro. That's that expensive grease. Is it? Oh gosh, um, I think I, what's that grease cost? Two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks a bottle. Uh, that's that, like that looks like the pen grease. Let's yeah. see. Can you get that on there, Jim? I'm gonna try. Yeah, it's hard to get my fingers up in there. <sighs> it's tedious. Yeah, nothing's easy about this stuff. First turn on there. Ooh, there you go. There's not a lot of room to work. Kind of, we took it off the butt, makes it a little easier to remove it. But now we just want to. Make sure she's on there good. See how it's moving now? Yeah, so we're good. that looks good. Probably could have moved the Cost of this reel, they want to know the cost of the reel. Um, it's expensive. Uh, it's all custom, I don't, I don't, what do they cost stock? You're probably talking, grand. well, the mount, the mount itself for the motor is 2300, 2395, yeah. and then you've got level the level line accessory, the counter, the anodizing, you're probably looking at seven grand, six, seven grand plus the reel. You're probably looking at five, six grand. I yeah, guess. I don't. It's a lot of money. Top of my it's head. a lot of money. It's not cheap. This is a Hooker electric reel. Oh my gosh! I just threw some line out. Who's texting me? Everybody's texting me. It's funny. Right. When, when you go live, dude, slowly, we'll just make we'll sure. Go sure real slow. Ready? Make sure the level one's working right. Here we go. Ready? Three, two. Nice and slow, very slow. That's it? Just let me know. I think we're good to go, yeah. Think we're good? Yep, good to go, good to go. Crank it up, right? Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, nice. Look at that. That's beautiful. Probably a little rack focus right this time. You like that? Ooh, the quality of the machine is even better than yours. Put it down. Set the floor connection. Yeah, we lost the blind. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. But what can I use to spend $600 to get $100? Uh, that's a great reel for carpet and stars. Uh, Billfish, anything. Uh, let's pull it with uh, some braid backing. Put, I don't know, two, 300 yards of... 65 pound brake back in and then put the rest 30 pound mono. If you're gonna if you're gonna fish on a boat, if you fish on on the beach, I just go straight brake. Water groupers, Warsaw, maybe, probably not. Maybe. That's a pretty, pretty gnarly yeah, fish. Yeah. A little one. I don't think we're going to get a 400 pounder. He'll break this off. <laughs> um, 
maybe. Um, I mean, you can get swords, you can get tunas, you can get you can catch, you can catch anything on this reel. But mainly, this is for. I mean, this is going to be mostly used for deep dropping. You want it, we're using heavier braid on this reel because if you're fishing uh, with a deep water sandbar, you, you hook a big, big snowy, you can pull them out before he breaks you off in the, in the structure. Um, and also for high speed going for Wahoo. So if you have a 100 pound Wahoo, you better be ready. He's going to pull. We are going to fish later. Yes, we are. Screen quality is intense. Okay. Coming up on 900 yards. 900 yards? Yep. 3,900 rotation. 4,000 rotation. That's beautiful. The school of line is um, three above. 4,000, you get 900, 1,000 yards. Yeah, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put 80, 80 in the other one. Mm -hmm. Good. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh, can go. This is a Tiago reel that's been modified for, by Hooker Electric. 4,400 rotation. Gotta continue selling. I know. Yeah, right? He's gotta work. He's a working man. I have not fished in, in, in uh, Minnesota yet, no. What kind of braid? This is J braid, 120 pounds. That's spooling perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful. Couldn't get any better than that. It's pristine. It's very pristine. We're at 4,800... Uh, I'm sorry, not 4, 4, 4, 480 RPM. 4,800 RPM. Like, Whoa, that thing is going way faster than that. <laughs> you don't want it so fast you cut your fingers off. That, that's not, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> How far do you think we should go? I, how far do you yeah. think we should go? Yeah. I'm going to keep dropping We're just going to keep dropping this thing. We're not going to keep dropping with this, so you don't need to put the swordfish line down on top. No. So you don't need to leave that space, so you could go as high up as you want to go, as long as you don't go over the edge. Yeah. I always like to keep it shy of the edge, though, so it doesn't pop oh, yeah. over. Well, you know, and also for Wahoo fishing, maybe we put a little mono. Yeah, yeah. We don't even need that. You don't really even need that. You don't need that. I did for five years in Cat Island using two LPs. and. What was your biggest Wahoo that you guys got? And we actually got in the boat was 95 and a half. Really? Uh, we got heads in that the oceanic white tips What's that? Uh, made a meal there. that the heads right. uh, had one head that was 40 pounds from the gill plates forward. So no. it would have been about a 140, 150. Are, are you serious oh, yeah. now? You lost 140 pound Wahoo? Yeah. You lose a lot of them over there. San Salvador, if you ever do want to catch a 100 pound Wahoo, that's, that's the, place the place to, to go. go. Oh, yeah. Cat Island is an awesome place. Have you fished, uh, have you fished uh, the bank off of uh, Crooked Island to the west? Yep. How's that? It's, it's, actually, it's a great place there, to too. Fish. I heard they have a marina opening there if they haven't already. When uh, when I was going to Crooked, uh, you yeah, had to anchor up. This one is... We're at 5,500 RP. I don't know. I don't know how much farther I want to go. I probably want to leave a quarter, a quarter yeah. in for the sides. 1400 yards. Man, this whole everything's hot. Wow. Some the pressure. I think we're good here. What do you think? 1400 yards from all the way. I think you're just deep dropping. You might get sharked up every once in a while. You get so much line on here and get shaped for a while. I think we're good there. What do you think? I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. We got 5700 yards. Here, we're, let's make it an easy, an, an even. Ah, screw it, whatever. 
we, we don't need to be OCD about numbers here. You can make here. it right at 1500, that way you know exactly. Okay, 1500, here we go, we're going to put 1500 on there. 1478, here's the counter right here, David. Okay. Okay. Let's slow it down. We're at 1490. 1500 yards. 1507.6. Beautiful. A, a little extra to tie your line. Right, and it should be a file account. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. All right. So that one's done. Now we can now we can do the other one. Where's the scissors at? Yeah, the shears somewhere right around here. Got them. Do you have more of these? I need another pair. Right, these things cut forever. Chris, Chris cut. cut. How how crispy? Crispy. Go. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good. That was nice. Alright, let's see if you pop this handle right here. Try to make sure this thing's turned off because it could give you a little knuckle buster there. And we're good there. Yep. There we go. That one is finished. So we're going to unplug this right here. This is where you plug it to your boat. Alright, there we go. That's unplugged. Now we're just going to pull this thing off. Put the other one on there. Got that cinched down and everything. Yeah. Uh, green one after that? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Puppy. Puppy? Yeah, yeah, type in your own and you can rifle right through that after a while. So <laughs> Boom. That one's done. Alright, I'll hand you this one. Two of these bad boys. These reels, like I said, guys, are about six. I think they're around six thousand each. Twelve thousand dollars in reels, just right there. It's pretty insane when you think about it. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, Take care, man. Have a good trip. We will. We will. Hopefully, hopefully the rod does. Yep. Thirty votes for reels. <laughs> Yeah, Sounds do, man. You got it. Dude, I'm dude. If you see a clean yeah. shirt in my closet, something's yeah. wrong. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it's just like, it's either meat sauce or blood on it. Yeah. Oh, super dark. Same deal with this one here. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna put the 80 on there. So we'll say we'll say if that's full. We're gonna go. We're gonna put. Let's put, let's try. Can we, put can the, we check the chat in a minute, or is that gone? The chat's still there. Where's your phone at? Right here. Chat's good. Chat's really good. All right. All right, we're gonna put this one on. I'm gonna go ahead and do the love one now. Yep. Okay. Switch the spool out. Am I using yellow braid? Yeah. Yeah. This is 80. Wait. Well, do we want to? Do we even do it? Do you have a spool of this in 80? Um. Wait. No. 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 Is it, same, is it, is it the same diameter? 0.43. I think I had it over here. I guess. You know what? Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Right here. Here. 80. I got it right here, Joe. Okay. Hey Mike. So we got 1,500 yards. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is that a puppy? What? Yeah, she's uh, seven months old. No. That's yeah. A beautiful dog. Thanks. Davis is a dog person. James has been putting a lot of stuff with her on his. I know. I see it. Yeah, I love that dog. Dog's beautiful. Yeah, she's cool. Chill too. For a six, seven month old, she's pretty chill. Oh, yeah. yeah she's a sweet face. Yeah, can't beat that. I totally popped the thing uh, off. So, whose dog is it? Yours or Jamie? It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> if you base it on who does all the work with it, it's yeah. me. <laughs> and if he's got a problem with one of them, I got two more. Okay. Uh, one of them's the plate. Is a little oh, wait, let me finish taking this thing off. I got four exactly the same, and then the other one has a little bit more. Jim, thanks for doing that uh, kingfish. Oh, oh hey, was any good? Oh, I, I didn't try it. I figured People love dogs. Yo, yo, seriously, if you I guys have a dog. It was, right. it was David good. wants to know what kind of dog you have. Tell us what kind of dog you have, seriously. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, isn't that a beautiful dog? Hey, buddy. 
Who are you? Wait, what's the name, Jeff? Delilah. Delilah? That's our shop dog. Oh. She's the guard dog? Yeah. So if you come to Grand Slam, you'll get to see Delilah. She's oh. a watchdog. Yeah, he's so She watches sweet. people come in and she watches them leave. <laughs> you want to take this guy off? He is so yep. sweet. All right. Let's see if people are Oh, Caitlin's gone. Yeah. I'm streaming right now. Oh, people, uh, people love the dog. Wow. <laughs> Come on now. A lot of people have uh, you know, labs and golden retrievers. Yeah, really. So why do you use the reverse uni instead of just the uni? Just because it's easier to tie it off the off the spool when you're in the shop here. Yeah. And you can cinch it tight and then still slides it down tight to the spool. All right. So you do the reverse. You know what? I've only tied a few of those, so let's see. Yeah. Somebody want to come over here? Yeah. All right. So you just basically I just grab it. Yeah. And start wrapping away. Okay, I see exactly what you're doing. Now, do you put it underneath here, in here, in yep. here too? Okay. Yep. So I go there. How many wraps are you doing? Ah, uh, like six or seven. One to there. Back through here. Back to the hole. Boom. Yeah, and then you can get her tight right here, and then she slides it down. Yeah. And it also gives you a chance to get it positioned on the tape when you're filling with braid. We do it with mono as well, but. Works great with everything. Give me that. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna crank this thing. Oops. I gotta sit that down more. <coughs> that should be good. Okay, we don't want knuckle busters, so let's just do a little test here and make sure this thing's not going to... Oh, wait, let me press the button. Hold on. So we're going to... Watch out, Davis, in case that hand up does. Hold on. Hello? You got to go and over, override. Hey, mate. Okay, here we go. So you want to, you want to, I'm going to put pressure on it. You want to guide? Yep. It's just a good idea to have it hold it up a little bit in the beginning. All right. Which one? Uh, okay, let's go over here this way. Okay. Got pressure? Yep. Back a little bit there. Just slow down. Start slow. Here we go. That one's not that fun to guy with. This one's way funner. Hold you on. Need, you need to crank the drag up, I think. Way higher, yeah. Hold on, let me turn the preset way up. Pull, pull back on that line. It didn't spool on that good. We want an X on the bottom. Do not want straight lines. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Correct. We're gonna crank this thing. Ready? Turn it on slow. We're gonna get an X. Come on now. Those are so fast, aren't they, Jim? Yep. Full speed.
left. I was just the spot in the school was a little loose. Hang, hang it tired of guiding it, hey? Yep. What's that counter say now? It says 3,000. That's 300, 300 yards. Oh, that is the best one. Yep. It's hard to see. Yeah, 3,000, I think the line would be coming up. Yeah, you got 3,000 yards in there. And we're that, that low, I mean, we're going to have a big thing. We're going to have a big stick. Why is that um what's that popping sound? Is that it's just see how see in the spool here? Mm -hmm. There's a few strands that are a little bit loose ah. in there. That's all it is. When it gets to that it kind of pops it. Oh. Yeah, okay. It happens on a lot of these things, a lot of these spools. The company's not taking care of the line properly, is it right? Well, I mean this is this isn't that bad really. No? <laughs> you seen worse? You've seen worse for sure. This one's gonna have a lot more line, guys. What do you think we can put the, the, the level on, Jim? I keep going. Go keep a little going. higher than we did last time. Uh huh. And you won't. You'll look, the higher you go, the less of that arc you have on the side of the school. Yeah. You guys must go through a lot of gloves. Yes, we do. Because I can feel it. <laughs> I'll show you a box in the back. It's full. A big box. I can't believe it. I mean, there is some serious heat there. That's not even a joke. Good thing we're not using this for black tip fishing. I would never use this this color line for black tips. They'd be biting it all day. Any bright line, they they just black tips around, or are they all gone? They're gone. But but they bite line like I. There's, there's, I don't think there's any other fish that intentionally targets line. Like if you put yellow braid out, you'll get you'll lose ten rigs in one day, no problem. Like in hours. 
They just you'll see them swim right up to your line and they bite it. You know any other fish that does that? That intentionally bites fishing line? Yeah, maybe wahoos. They bite everything. Yeah, that's Swirls, true. Swirls, leads. Dude, this glove is so hot. Oh my god. Are we, are we melting the plastic on that spool? Well, we use a wet rag to pr try to avoid that. You know, we're putting this kind of pressure on. Oh yeah. So if we put too much pressure on that, you don't need a wet rag, you're gonna melt the spool? Yeah, the glove heats up and you start melting the spool and burning through the glove. Yeah. Really? That's crazy. The problem with it is you get you start to get the spool melted and then the spool, the plastic hardens back up and it gives you like all these ridges. Yeah, and it cuts the line. And then you have problems with chafing or nicking of the line. Yeah, you don't want that. Come on now. You know, it's actually kind of a mind game to get this thing on perfectly at the time, like, like in this situation. You're never going to be perfect, but you, you know, you want to try your best. Minecraft? Yeah, you just got to be concentrated. You can't, this isn't mindless activity here. you got to really watch it. What do you think, Jim? Put it on now? Just go in the center? Yeah, and then it'll go on a little more even. Uh, once the level one kicks in, it'll, it'll be a little more even. What do you think, Jim, now? Yeah. Pull it down. You want to put the wind on? Yeah, I say so. Dude, that is insane. Is it hot? I mean, just feel it. I see the steam coming off of it. Yeah, that's tough. Not that bad, but... Yeah, I know. Let's not, let's not get too dramatic here. <laughs> Jeez. All right, here we go. Let me put the wind back on. How many rotations? We're at 4,400 rotations, and we're at half spool. We're probably going to get 8,000 on there. What do you think? Or 6,000? I'm a, I'm a yard guy. You're looking at almost 900 yards. You're, yeah. a, you're a rotation yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> we live by yards, yards here, but I see where you're when you're fishing, you got to go with what the reel gives you. Well, you're charging for yards, right? So right, you gotta, that's you true. Make, you, if you're charging per rotation... Hey, that might be more profitable. <laughs> that's six rotations. That's five bucks. Come on now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, man. This thing is tricky. See, these, these serrated dexters, that will cut your leg off in one second. That's a scary knife. You can your cut leg? A, dude, you can, cut a, you can cut a frozen bonita in half. <laughs> Done. Frozen. It's like it's steaming. It's so, it's so hard. And you go, <laughs> it's gone. Scary. Unbelievably. I just got to think with knives, guys. You, you, these sharp knives, you got to be real careful with them. All right. You don't even have to really do anything now, Josh. Yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, you know. Stand there and look good. Yeah, I'm just gonna look real good. Just move this lever here a little bit. Stand there, look good. Let me know when you're ready. Let me switch to this. With your new Black Tip H merch on. Yeah, exactly. New Black Tip H merch. New, new shirts. Let me see the back of it. What is it? Yeah. Oh, see those. See. See? Nice. Oh, our front back for you too. There's a good Grand Slam shirt there too. Ooh, I heard your back crack. Grand Slam. Did you you heard in the mic? Say what? You can hear in the mic? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can hear the little crack. Okay. Little crack. 
Oh, that's all that line spooling right there. <laughs> that'd be awesome, yeah. That'd be yeah you don't want to press the button out because no one's watching the spool. If you don't put pressure on the spool, yeah, it almost defeats the purpose of what we're doing. Yeah. Actually, that, that does defeat it. Look at the dog just. I've just been going. Yo, around look, around look, around. Look, turn around, turn around. Let's, let's, let's. Oh, you are crazy. Come here, you. Hey, Delilah. Hey, she just looks so happy. Doesn't that just make your day to see this dog? Hey. Hey. Oh, you just want to rub it. Yes. Oh. oh she's going to be a star. Oh, she's already a that's, star. That's people, Delilah. Don't, people don't care about the reels. They're trying to watch the dog. No one cares about the reels. Yeah, they care about the real. That's why we're here. I don't I don't see dogs it. go to a pet store. Okay, here we go. Ready? Three, two, <laughs> slow, and here we go. Good. I'm out of defense for that. You want me to send it? Yeah. Here we go. Ready? Three, two. All right, predictions. How many rotations? We're at 40, 40 to 100 right now. Guys, what do you think in the comments? We're at 40 to 100 rotations. How? Are we gonna hit 8,000? I think I think we'll hit 8,000. I think you will. Are we gonna? You think we're gonna hit 8,000, guys? 8,000. All right, I want you guys to guess how many yards and how many. So right now we're currently at 938 yards. So guess we're at basically half school here, a little a little more. So guess how many yards? And we're at 4,700 rotations. So guess how many rotations until the reel's full. Now this one we are gonna. This is a swordfish reel too, so we're gonna make sure we have enough room for a top shot. I'm gonna leave a quarter inch on there. I think we're I think we'll fit two thousand yards on here. What do you think? What's it at now? Two thousand yards. What's it at now? Thousand. No. Maybe sixteen, seventeen hundred. Think so? Which one's with the die? Yeah. All right, we're switching off here. So why don't you do this all the whole time? I don't know. Dude. All right. I'm charging you for that. Charging me? Okay, <laughs> good. There we go. We're back on it. All right. We got 81, 59, 69, 69, 8421, 5, Oh, a lot, a lot of guesses here. A lot of guesses. 3,000. Now, now, this is proof that it's live. Okay? Yeah, yeah, we are live. No, no, no fake, no fake news. No fake news. Oh, no. We got, we got political. You know what? Yeah, you're right. We're not, we're not, we're not going all the way through. We're probably going to fit like 1,600 yards of them. You know, we got 1,500 to 120. I'm just sitting there thinking we're probably going to get. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's all the way though. What's that? That was full. That's full of the top. I don't know. I, we might go. If we 1,700. Yeah. What's it at now? 5470. Oh, yards. 1150. Where's that? Where's the other school of line at? Okay, so this is point five five millimeters, and that's point four three. So you're talking about you know point one two millimeter difference. I mean that's I don't know what would that be. Point one two divided by you get a percentage there. I, you know what? Forget the math. Let's just see what happens. There's no exact science here. I mean, you know, you can do that. And if the line's wet, the line's dry. It's just all different. We're at 1,200 yards right now. And she's cranking. This is why, you guys, electric reels, when you drop down a bait, like, you know, 900,000, 1,600 feet for swords or whatever, or queen snapper or whatever, whatever you fish for, you have to hand crank that all up. A lot of you guys have seen the comments over the years. You have to crank that up. You are so miserable. You're miserable. You got 10 pounds of lead on there. It's not fun. It's not fun. So, is it good? Can you go back and forth? No, I'm just checking on the back. Yeah. Oh, is business. the real move? Is, is the gimbal moving? It's a swivel gimbal. I just want to make sure it wasn't creeping out at all. I see what you're saying there, yeah. I did notice that a little bit. 6,000 rotations. Got a long way to go, too. How big was that maker you got out here? Long, what was that, like 10 years ago? Yeah, 808 pounds. Dying. At night? Sorting? We didn't, you, we didn't get any swordfish at night. What'd you use for bait? Uh, 
a harpoon and a flying gaff. <laughs> really? What are you, were you booty fishing? No, we were fishing all night, never had a bite. Yeah. And we had the baits dangling off the boat, getting ready to leave, and he swam through the hydro glow light right next to the boat. And you guys were ready to harpoon it drop that quickly? Dropped the bait real quick, he swallowed it and threw a harpoon in him before he even had a chance to swallow it. Did you guys eat them? Yeah. That's one of the best seen fish. The smaller they are, the better eat they yeah. are. You know, we caught one two weeks after that uh, that was about 145 pounds. Would and you, it was that rivaled swordfish. What would you say? I would say Mako's better than sword. What would you say? Uh, well, pumpkin sword blows it away, in my opinion, if you, you get so? a pumpkin sword. But I think Mako's a softer meat, The thing meat, with the sharks, any t sort of shark, whether it's a fresher shark, a Mako, um, I like to freeze them. Yeah. Once, once you cut the steaks, freeze them, leave them in the freezer for a few weeks. It's almost like animal meat. Really? It gets better no. the longer it is. We, we pulled some thresher shark five months out of, of the freezer after we caught the thresher up in Massachusetts, and it was absolutely fantastic. Really? And sword doesn't... Sword you don't have to worry. I'd rather eat swordfish fresh. Really? I don't like it frozen. But shark is one fish I like to have, you know, freeze the meat and yeah. eat it a little while later. It's almost like with deer meat. You don't want to eat it right away. It's too gamey. Yeah. So let it let it freeze, let it age. Makes sense. I remember I ate Mako a couple of times, and you guys, it was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the way I describe it, it's like a swordfish texture, but it's soft, like a snapper. Yeah, so it's much softer than, than a swordfish meat. I think the mistake most people make uh, when they cook fish is they cut them just the, the fillets or the steaks too thick. Yeah. So by the time the insides don't cook and the outsides like rubber. Yeah, exactly. So I tend to cut my steaks a little bit thinner. Yeah. And I'll use breadcrumb, different uh, pistachio encrusted. I'll just Ooh. and that protects the inside and holds the moisture. In. It's actually uh, I never thought of that way. It's awesome. I never thought of it. Great that. way to do it. Yeah. We're gonna have to get him on catch and go. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. Jeez. What are you on uh, yardage wise now? Sixteen hundred. Yeah. And we gotta wait. And we still got. Well, you a don't want to go too crazy much more because of the wind on. The wind, nice. the wind is like. A, 250, 250, yeah, so you gotta leave some room, but I, I think you can, you can still go. You've got a lot of room on there still. Yeah. What do you think? I go 18 or 1800? 1800? Yeah. You should go real deep with this thing. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see, uh, I've, I've never hooked one, but the, when you hook a bluefin out here sorting, do they stay deep or do they come up in the warm water? They, they, tend, to, they you, tend to go up and down a lot. You yeah. Know, you'll see them come up a ways, then they'll go back down, and they'll come up. What are the big guys? Do they do the same thing? Yeah, the big the big bluefins that we caught up in uh, Maine, they go down on you pretty quick, and they stay yeah. down. Yeah, but the water's much warmer here, so they're going oh, yeah. to behave differently. Yeah, they do behave a little bit. They're moving, too. They're on oh, the yeah, way they migrate. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys have a lot of reels to I see that out there. Look at that. What do you got, like 15 reels to pull after, the, after these ones? Oh, wow. More than that. All those have to be pulled? I spooled uh, the 50s are spooled. We still got to do the 80s, and then Mike's got about 15 cal assorted size calicas he's got to do. This is all one boat? No, two boats. Two boats? Yep. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Where are we at here? Come in. All right, here we go. Yes, I do need to go blue. Too. I need to go blue into the fishing. Absolutely. That's gonna happen here soon. We're at 1,900 yards. I think you're good. I think, we, I think we go to 2,000, dude. I think I think we could go. There's lots of room in there for a wind on. We're gonna go 2,000 yards. Why not? 8,200 rotations already. Incredible. 1950. We're gonna go 2,000. Yeah, we doubted ourselves we were going to 50,000. We fit it up there comfortably. I'll put that on my uh, braid log. Huh? We keep a braid log of how much different reels take. Try yeah. to keep it, keep track of it. So you're not always guessing. You think there's enough room for a wind on there? Yeah. Sweet. 
2,018 yards and a total of 8,497 rotations. I was short. I said 8,200 rotations. <laughs> A little short, a little short. That was close. That was close, though. So this guy will. Um, I guess we could we could show one, one of your one of your one of your famous uh, swordfish rigs <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> Grab one right here. Hey, buddy. Oh, we'll get this guy ready. You know what? Do we think? Um, I don't, you know what, I don't want to attach it right now. Because we, we might use it for, well, yeah. All right. Well, this is this is the swordfish rig, guys. Mike ties all these himself. It's the old, fa old fashioned way of doing wind downs. It's based on cinching on itself. Yeah. So you could put that loop on a tailgate of a truck or on a, on a ball hitch and pull on it as hard as you want, and it is not going to pull. No. But you can actually take a loop and pull the whole wind down right apart. And that's the old school way of doing it. So you don't want to enlarge the loop. If you want a custom size loop, you have to ask for it. I make all the loops the same size. Um, but yeah, you can, and, and some guys will take zap a gap and put a little dab right at the beginning of the loop so people can enlarge the loop. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the old fashioned way of doing wind downs. I like it. I want to figure out how to do that wax thing. I mean, it doesn't look that hard, but uh, but I'll you, you got to show me how to do that. Someday. And I could do Dacron loop is also a way to go. Dacron loop's better, right? It, it'll last longer. Yeah. It's just a little bit extra work. So what I do for just the ones that we sell at the shops, I just do a, a double up seventy floss loop, mm -hmm. and that'll That's hold for quite right a there, few guys. drops. That's the loop right there. That's what you attach your weight to when you go sorting. Dropping this thing down, sixteen hundred feet. Well, I'll show you what, we got a lot more reels to spool here, so I'll show you what we also have here, guys. We got, these are all custom. I think they're really, oh, sorry, I'll watch you there. We got custom spinning reels. I just, oh, oh, knocked your hanger down there again, sorry. 65. Um, Everything matches here. Everything's in custom too. spinning reels. We got custom 50 wide. Check this out, look at this. We gotta spool all these up. It's gonna take it's gonna take some serious time. There you go. You, you, can you see that? Yeah, we still got more to go. These are all then you have to spool? Yeah, we're not gonna do all that today, no oh, way. Nice. Let's get real here. Um a lot of lot of thinking in this, because you know, we're gonna use these bigger ones for, for uh throwing a tuna and big mahi. So we probably want more braid for line capacity, especially if you hook up a big yellowfin. And then uh 50s we're gonna use for, for tuna and for blue marlin. We got we got an 80 right here. We got one more. It's in the works right now. Um, we're gonna use that for blue marlin. We even got a 130 here in case things get real serious. You know me. I always have my 130 with me. So whatever, sharks, giant marlin, anything. What's the biggest marlin you guys ever heard of being caught? Has there ever been a grander caught in one of us? Yeah. Oh yeah. There has been. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You need a 130 for that guy. Yeah, I mean, most guys are using, you know, when they're when they're marlin fishing, with, especially if they're going for the bigger fish. Yeah. They're going to use 80 Tiagras or 130 Tiagras. But one thing that has changed is, is braid has changed with fishing. It has. Oh, no, definitely. Um, oh, Mike, if I can replace some mics. Cool. There we go. I'm doing a mic transfer here. Mic transfer? Mic transfer. Transfer. Mic tra transfer to Mike. Transfer. <laughs> mic transfer to Mike. <laughs> Transferring mic here. What's the biggest fish that has been caught in the, in the Bahamas? Yeah. I'd have to look it up. I know that just uh, use the shotgun, right? Jason, Par Jason Parker. Jason Parker a while back that. ended up catching a. He caught a fish that was over 1,100 over there. So. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> that was the laziest mic placement I've ever yeah, seen. I've never, <laughs> oh, I it's know okay, what, man. Just, it's just, it's just, just me. Let me get a shot of that. Real that is the worst mic. Hey, we have a shotgun mic. It's just me. Don't worry. Okay, you know what? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna good. kill it. We're almost done, anyways. <laughs> yeah, that was the laziest mic placement ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was yeah. gonna. I ran out of room. This is um. We're gonna get this guy. When you guys finish those, I'm gonna get this with the, the okay. wire. Do you, do you guys have the mono wire? We can show show the audience. We have the stainless right now. I don't know if I have. How many feet do you need on top? Are you gonna want to fill it with? I want to fill or? it all the way for wire yeah, we, we have the stainless. I don't have, really have a full spool of Monel at the moment. Let's show them a stand. It's just so we put wire on the reel. Okay, and this is what we use for wahoo fishing. And uh, 
Ashley, do you know the history of what, when they started when they start using this? Where, as far as... Like, when did people switch to that versus regular... I mean, because they used to... Before that, there was cotton, right? Yeah, I mean, most of linen line, which is, like, yeah. Dacron, pretty much. And, I mean, it was probably... This is what I we would have to real say, guys. you know, late 70s, early 80s. I mean, I, I still prefer that for Wahoo fishing than braid. Well, a lot of people like the the wire. The nice thing about the wire is by the time when you fill up a spool, you got all that, that's a lot of weight. It is. So when you get that much wire in the water, you don't need as much lead. No. On, on uh, well, as far as what's, your. What's also nice with the, with the wire is if you hook, if, you know, you know how Wahoo fishes, you get a triple header or whatever, you get four lines, you can get a quadru you know, quadruple header. Um, with braid, if they cross, they'll, they'll, they'll cut each yeah. other off. But the wire, you know, you got you got more forgiveness there. Yeah, yeah you that's, do. That's important because <laughs> you don't no want to hook three three eighty pounders <laughs> and then uh, they all get kinked off. That'd yeah. be miserable. Exactly. I just think the main reason is it, it makes the outfit so much heavier. So yeah. a lot of people like switching to the braid. <laughs> IGFA changed the rules where you could put as much braid as you want, any size on the reel, as long as you had, I believe it's 15 meters of the IGFA stated line for that particular tournament. Wait, are you serious right now? So you could actually put braid and literally have what's a meter, 3.3 feet. So you're talking about all you would need is what, so, 40, So you're 50, telling me you could feet. spool a 130 with 10,000 yards of, of <coughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we were put, getting, we were doing... 20, 100 feet of 20 pound yeah. IGFA mono and that that's record? That yeah. What? It changed everything. It really has. I mean, that's why everybody was coming in last year for the tournaments in Bermuda, everywhere around North St. Thomas, and they were having us fill their reels. And we were putting, like, on a, for instance, um, on some TLD 50s, we we're getting almost 800 and something yards of braid. Yeah. And then we we're still getting 400 yards of mono on top of that. So you had 1,200 yards of line on a 50. So what, it changes you, the game. What were you spooling that with? Fifty pound braid? Uh, it, I'm trying to. Th I think it was eighty. Eight, if fit, I'm not mistaken. Fit, how yeah. many yards on, on a t on a TLD fifty two speed? I think we were getting like 800, 800, between eight hundred to eight hundred and fifty yards of braid on the on the reel, and that still left room for almost a four hundred yard top shot. Of wow. Line. So that's that's insane. Yeah, I didn't think you could fit that much on a fifty. That's crazy. What's up, Dave? <laughs> the um. All right, yeah, I gotta ask, dude, because it, it bothers me. These these four these four pound test records. I mean, I saw a five hundred fifty pound blue marlin on a four pound. That's just ridiculous. It's, I mean, that's just be it's not I real. Remember, Stuart it's Stuart nice, Campbell no was way. was fishing in Madeira back in the day before he passed, and he was he had a fish that would have broken the thirty pound record. Yeah, with but what they're when you get down to four pound, yeah, they're big fish down there. When you when you're going after a record like that with four pound, you're not really fighting the you're fish. You're feeding them, and then you're backing down as hard as you can and trying to stroke them, because there, it's just, not even fishing. as soon as he puts any tension on that line, it's gonna break. So yeah. you got to just back down full throttle. I mean, you're literally having a harpoon ready, and you're just throwing a harpoon in this thing, or a right? flying gaff, you know. I mean, it's like most people, are, I mean, the harpoons have really come into play with the daytime sword fishing. Mode. Yeah. So. You got a flying gap right behind you. Yep, we used one. So. Now, you know what's funny? Uh, um, like I got one. It's, it hooks a little. I think it's around the same size as that one. But a couple of marlin guys they told me they have huge hooks because when they when they when they flat put a flyer in, in a big marlin, they want to get underneath the spine. Yeah. Because if not, you're just going to pull through. Flyers. Yeah, it can rip through them. Have so, you seen yeah. them with like like I, I mean, uh, I've, I've, fortunately we haven't had a, an issue with that. Yeah. So <laughs> on the fish that we've killed in the past. I've um, mostly released all the fish we've ever caught, but yeah. I've killed a few fish. I think the biggest we've killed was over 500. But are most of the, the, the big the big marlin tournaments are all still big. They're also kill tournaments, right? They they are not total kill tournaments, but yeah. that's where the money is. Yeah, the um, kill And marlin, also, right? it's they have the, 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 the fish has to be a certain length to even qualify to be killed. Really? So, yeah, I mean you can't just kill a fish at three. It's got to be at least 500 pounds. In some tournaments, it's 500. Other tournaments, it's, it's 600. And there's a certain length. So you have to. You, yeah, it has to be that minimum size. Yeah. yeah. Right, and if you DNS kill that, if you super chat, by the way, appreciate that. Sorry to interrupt. Oh no worries. If you kill that fish and he's under the minimum length, you lose points. You don't get the points for it. Really? So. See, I've never, I've never really been a tournament angler. I, I, I've never really had interest in it because it just seems like filming fishy shows is. 
and it's stressful enough. Yeah, and well, adding that level, it just adds more stress. And marlin fishing, for the most part, but like especially in the Bahamas, it's hours and hours of boredom followed by moments of pure chaos. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you wait all day for that bite, but you don't forget that bite ever. No. I mean, it's you spend a lot of time trolling, looking for them, but, man, when you get a marlin bite, there's nothing like it. Oh, dude, marlin are, are insane. Yeah. Have you seen the dorsal thing come up? I saw a video from Madeira, dude. They hooked like a 900 pounder. Oh, yeah. it was, ins this thing came in so angry. It was inside <laughs> of the spread and it was just zooming back How and forth. How fast they are. It's oh. And then you'll have two teaser rods and you're just sitting there like, he's on that side, he's on this side, he's on that side. It's the just, reel's half full before you get yeah. even even ready. Yeah, you gotta be ready to clear everything, get it all out. That's where another thing that it, the braid has helped is that you have so much line on the reels nowadays. Yeah that you have a little leeway as far as, you want to still clear everything as quick as possible. But when you were fishing straight mono, you know, he could have half his spool gone eight. by the time you get everything cleared. So. Yeah. Excuse me for a moment, guys. No worries. Well, guys, uh, we got two electric reels spooled here. This one, we're, we're, we're like, like we're not gonna spool this all the way because we want to be able to have a wind on there. That's really important for sorting and for other things for what we're gonna be doing with these, so. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching here. If you guys need to get your reels pulled, come to Grand Slam, check them out. And uh, also, make sure you check out our new merch here, Black Bay shirts. Go to blackbay.com, hats, shirts, neck scarves, we've got everything. So check it out. Also, our new Black Bay rods, guys. We just launched them. They're awesome, limited lifetime warranty rods. Literally, like, I'm a big believer in buy it once, don't buy it twice. So our rods are designed to buy once. If they break, you send it back to us, and if nothing else, if it's our, if it's on us, we replace it lifetime, for a lifetime of the product. So check those out, guys, blacktiph.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.